In this video, we're going to talk about money. I'm going to talk about salary ranges for data scientists depending on their seniority level in Stockholm and in Sweden in general. I will discuss what kind of benefits you get when you work in Sweden, both from government and the company you may be working for. And I will also talk about the corporate culture in general around raises, talking about money, salary increase, promotions, and so on. And if you're not interested in specifically data science salaries, you can skip to the next section where I'm going to talk about general benefits that you get when you work in Sweden depending on the employer that you have. My research on the salaries is based on both publicly available information that you can find in sites like Glassdoor or when you search for general average salaries in Sweden for particular roles, as well as my own experience, the offers that I got from companies that I might have not accepted or the offers that I have accepted, and a little bit of discussions with friends that work in the same field about what they think is the fair and um, common compensation for data science salaries. So when you're still in university, if you're studying data science or computer science, engineering, machine learning, you might do an internship or maybe a master thesis that you could write in a certain company. It's really hard to say how much you can get compensated in this way. Some companies tend to not compensate for those kind of roles. Some companies tend to compensate only at the end of the whole term for like one salary. It's like one equivalent to one month of salary. And in general, it won't be more than a junior data scientist salary. So we're going to skip to the junior data scientist right away. So when you start as a junior data scientist, you can expect something between 25 to 35,000 second month before taxes, which converts to approximately 19 to 27,000 sec after taxes. This is a very wide range and it depends first of all on your previous experiences it depends on what kind of company you apply to some more international company can offer you higher salaries some more local Swedish and smaller companies will offer you lower salary based on my experience a lot of junior data scientists when they start off start off with a very low salary so a little bit lower than the general like market average but when they continue working in the same company, they tend to have salary increases that put them on the market average. When you get promoted to the regular data scientist position, you can expect something between 35 to 50,000 sec, which is around 27 to 36,000 sec a month after taxes. And you can already start seeing that even though the range of salary is higher, the amount of money that you get after taxes is decreasing. And that's because this is the point where you start getting into the Swedish progressive taxation scale. Of course, this does not include any benefits that you get from the company, it doesn't include bonuses or stock options or anything like that. The senior data scientist salary range is somewhere between 50 to 60,000 sec, depending on how many years you work, depending on seniority level that you have, and that converts to between 36 to 43,000 sec after taxes a month. And if you're promoted to either principal data scientist or data science team lead for a data science manager or principal data scientist, the salary can also start from 50,000 sec but can go up to 70 or 80,000 sec. It depends really on your value to the company, on how much of a high performer you are, how valuable your, your work is, how much your manager values your existence in their company and how much they're willing to keep you there. So take this as like a very rough guideline. It's not necessarily exactly how much you would get. And it also, of course, depends on your negotiation skills. Salaries, though, are not the most important part about working in Sweden. Um, I would argue that it's one of the least important parts because salaries in Sweden generally don't tend to be that high. If you're really looking forward to earn a lot as a data scientist, I would recommend you looking in other countries, for example, UK or well, London specifically, or San Francisco have much higher paying data science jobs and many more options for those jobs. But Sweden has a lot of benefits, both uh, that are government benefits, but also government benefits that companies offer to their employees. So I'm going to dig into that right now. Everyone who works full time in Sweden has paid vacation days. It's 25 days a year. And very often companies offer as a benefit five more vacation days. They, those can be restricted to use around Christmas because it's generally the time where everyone is sort of on vacation or you can use them freely um, around the year. That really depends on what your company offer is. There's also this thing that's called Swedish summer. So you can get actually four consecutive weeks of vacation in the summer. Um, a lot of companies kind of do that forcefully, so you have to take those weeks out because the company business stops. But in the companies that are not so dependent on seasonality, I think you're still supposed to be able to get them if you really want. And in general, in Sweden, in summer, it's very, very low business 
time, there is not much happening, a lot of offices are very empty because people take those on vacation or they also add maybe parental leave to them and take like six to eight weeks off during summer. You of course get a parental leave, it is right now I think 480 days per one child split between two parents where each parent has to take at least 90 days. However, you're not gonna get paid all your salary, of course, for the parental leave duration. How much money you get during your parental leave depends on how high your salary is before the parental leave. And in a lot of cases, you will hit a cap on how much you can get paid per month. So even if your salary is really high, you will get more than a certain amount of money. There is also a certain number of days where you don't even get money based on your salary. You get a certain amount, I think it's like 180 second day. Another benefit that you get by working in Sweden and everyone else as well, not depending on the company, is the sick leave. You have a paid sick leave from the second day of your sickness, but right now due to coronavirus it has been changed, so you still get paid for the first day as well. You get around 80% of your uh, salary paid for those days between 2nd and 14th, and then the government starts paying your salary. And some companies offer an increased pay sick leave, so you'll get more than 80%. And with that, you get, of course, a state health insurance. Uh, some companies do offer private health insurance that allows you to skip queues and get to the doctor much faster than you would normally get to the doctor, which is a pretty good benefit as well. You also get a frisk for speed drug, which is a healthcare allowance. I'm sorry, Swiss, for uh, pronouncing this horribly. Up to 5,000 sec a year. Some companies don't offer that, but mostly they do because there is a proven benefit of actually offering that. People start taking less sick leave when they have a well-being allowance. I think on average it's around two or three thousand sec um, a year, but some companies do offer five thousand. And you can use that for gym, for massage, for dance classes, for different kinds of sports and activities. There is a list for which kind of activities you can use that. Now, of course, the two most important benefits that you get from companies that do increase your overall compensation like monetary compensation are first bonuses so yearly bonuses they're not offered in all the companies and i think they start from like maybe five percent of your yearly salary up to infinity depending on what is your role and what is your seniority i think average would be maybe five ten fifteen percent and the second benefit is either getting stock options or warrants that you can use to buy company stock in the future those are offered most often from various startups, especially tech startups, when they're banking on going big and attracting a lot of money. And you can exercise your warrants or stock options when the company is being traded, when they go to IPO or when they're being sold, for example. How much you get really depends on your negotiation skills and the policy of the company. The earlier you join, of course, is the better if they do have this policy. The later you join, the smaller amount of warrant or stock options you would get and it will also be harder to negotiate this because they try to kind of make everyone who already is in the company equal in terms of how much they would receive. More fun benefits that you get is fika and coffee and generally food. I think coffee you'd probably get in every company because coffee is like a staple of Swedish society. This is the way people socialize, this is the way people become productive in the morning and having a good pot of brewed coffee or some nice fancy hipster coffee brand making cappuccinos in your office is a generally quite common benefit. Some companies also offer breakfast or lunches but that's less common because it is considered as like a special benefit by um, Swedish government so they have to pay taxes. You do also in many companies get um, learning budget and they do organize events and various trainings. It can be either internal event or training that's organized by people working in the company or it can be them hiring an external company and giving you training on I don't know, soft skills, emotional intelligence, maybe your technical skills, as well as in some companies you can be offered your own learning budget for yourself or for the team and that budget you can use to go to conferences or to participate in some kind of events, training programs and so on. Maybe you can also have a Coursera budget so you can use that to do courses on Coursera and get certificates. Again, this is kind of really depends on what's available in the company, what's their policy and um, how willing they are to invest in their employees. Another quite good benefit is general like flexible working, especially if you work in digital space and if you work in more like startup -y, IT companies, then you can negotiate with your manager working from home for various 
amount of time, maybe for a few days or maybe even longer. Now we talked about money and benefits and let's talk a little bit about the corporate culture around those kind of things here in Sweden. I'm working two companies in Stockholm and both of them were started in Sweden, so they originated in Sweden. I would say that the general corporate culture that I encountered is kind of international that you can see in companies like Facebook, Google, maybe Twitter, or other digital companies um, across the around the world but it is with a very kind of Swedishified specifics. Sweden has a really good work culture and work environment. There is a good work-life balance depending of course where you work but it's much easier here to find really good work-life balance. You might not be expected to work long hours. Maybe sometimes if something really extraordinary happens but not as a regular practice you are not expected to work on weekends. You're not expected to be on call unless you're explicitly on call and get paid for that. Generally, it's very comfortable working here and that's one of the things that I like the most about Sweden, that I feel like work does not become as big of a stressful part of my life as it could be somewhere else. With that said, Swedish culture is very reserved and it is translated to the work culture, albeit I see that people are willing to be more open at work. Of course, when it comes to work affairs, it's easier to get more open and honest feedback than it would be in interpersonal communication, but it's still not a very direct country. So talking about a lot of different issues and topics becomes difficult because it has to have like a very good face. And that also translates to money. Talking about salaries and compensation here is very uncommon and you can really only do that either with your manager, but then it comes to your salary, of course, or you can do that with really close friends that you've been spending a lot of time with that maybe work in the same industry then kind of it's more acceptable even though i know a lot of people that are really uncomfortable talking about this so to be able to talk honestly about salaries with other people you have to like build very strong connection with them i would say networking is very important part of getting your salary increased or getting a promotion both networking within and outside your company when you network in your company even if it's not necessarily directly your manager but someone who is in position where they can be a part of the salary review. You can have a person that knows a little bit more about you, maybe knows a little bit more about your performance and your motivations and can vouch for you in the salary review process. Of course, provided that you are actually doing well and uh, meeting or exceeding your expectations in your role. And when you network outside of your company, it's a really good way to evaluate if you're paid fairly, whether you are on the market level, whether you are below market level, get an idea of how much other people can get paid for similar work or maybe different work, get an idea of how fast people get promoted. But this one, as I mentioned, is really hard, especially since people are not tend to be very open right away. So this is a lot of time that you might have to invest into talking to them, building connection before you can actually talk about certain things like salary. But I would say one of the best, unfortunately, ways to get the salary increase is to actually get an offer from a different company. Even if you don't know if you're paid fairly or not in your current job, but when you're interviewing in other companies and if you're successful, when you get an offer, you can get an idea of how much you would be valued somewhere else. If it is a better offer, you can either accept that offer, so that would be an increase in salary, or you can negotiate with your current company saying that this is what you can get paid in the market, but mentioning that maybe you have motivations to still stay in the same company and you can maybe get a better offer from your current company. The second best way to get paid more percentage-wise compared to your current salary is actually to be underpaid in the beginning. I already mentioned that I know a lot of data scientists, like junior data scientists, started off with a very low salary and got bumped up higher, um, like in terms of percentage, higher than others, just to be able to be matched for a market level. And uh, well, if you're paid very little, you can get paid much more. But that's not a particularly great situation to be in in the first place, I guess. I would say Sweden is generally quite fair country. There is a general kind of feeling that everyone's supposed to be equal. So I think it is quite easy to be treated fairly if you're doing your job very well and if you're exceeding your expectations in your role, then you can actually get a salary and promotion without having to really fight for it. And I think that's kind of different from other companies with different work cultures. I would say being just generally confident and outspoken person about your successes can be a benefit in this situation. 
but in most cases you will still get answers like we don't have enough budget for salary increases or you can hear something like we have a target of having two or three percent average salary increase for the whole company so you might not be able to receive something higher even though maybe you're gonna be worth it that is more up to luck and your kind of stellar performance if you are a very high performer it, it is of course possible to receive much higher salary increase but that is more you being lucky with your manager who's willing to fight for you fight for a different budget allowance fight for you to getting this increase and of course one of the most common ways to get a salary increase and in promotion that's above the yearly average increase is to either be promoted in your role to a more senior role or switching your role to some kind of different role in this case for data scientists it's good to first get a really good market average or higher than market average salary first on your level before getting promoted because the promotion will be percentage based from your previous salary and if you want to go into a different direction i think a lot of data scientists tend to go into project management or project ownership roles where you can get paid much more especially if you become a people manager as well at the same time so i think i told you everything i know about salaries and like the culture around money and salary raises and promotions in sweden let me know if something was missing uh, let me know if you want to know anything more specific about this topic also please subscribe to my channel for more videos around data science and career progression in sweden and like this video if you enjoyed it. Have a nice day.